There's a phrase in Indian country that when a Native American woman goes missing, she disappears twice. Once in life and once in the news. Good afternoon and welcome to True Crime Mysteries. If you're new to the channel, hello and welcome, and if you're returning, welcome back. First off, let's do some housekeeping. We have newly designed merch in the store as well as channel membership that gets you exclusive content and content first. If you could also like this video and comment with your thoughts, that would be very much appreciated as it helps the channel grow immensely. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the numerous women missing in BC, Canada. But with that being said, Let's get into it. British Columbia is a beautiful province, one that I grew up in. There are expansive mountain ranges, old growth forests, pristine coastlines, and beauty that I took for granted my whole childhood. It wasn't until I became an adult and started traveling to other places that I realized how lucky I was to call this place home. I moved to a larger city right out of high school and it terrified my grandmother and I always thought she was overreacting. I worked in the service industry with shifts that finished often at 1 a.m. I worked downtown, I didn't have a car, and I walked home by myself routinely. I didn't start carrying pepper spray until a coworker was attacked while walking home. She walked the same area I did to get home around the same time I normally did. I never walked home intoxicated, I never had headphones in, and I would pretend to be talking to someone on the phone, all in an effort to be a less appealing. I was taught growing up to yell fire instead of help. I knew to be cautious of vehicles that slowed down as they drove past. I was on high alert until I unlocked my apartment door, got inside, and locked it again. But even that didn't feel safe when I got a stalker who would get into my secure apartment building and slip pictures of me under my door. With that being said, I consider myself one of the lucky ones. I'm alive, and while that may seem dramatic, the number of missing and murdered women in the province is on the rise, with a high percentage of those women being indigenous. There is an entire stretch of highway dubbed the Highway of Tears, with over 80 documented victims from the 1970s to the present. Currently in the news, there's a lot of discussion around the interior BC and the Lower Mainland, with a number of high-profile missing women in the area. Though the RCMP have taken the stance that there's no reason to be concerned and that these cases are not related, they're still happening. Caitlin Potts has been missing since 2016. The last person she communicated with was her sister on February 22nd. Her family said that she was very active on social media, and when she stopped answering messages and posting on Facebook, they began to worry and reported her missing March 1st. The RCMP did not release a missing person alert until March 21st, almost three weeks after she was reported missing. These missing persons alerts normally occur the same day or within a couple days of a person being reported missing. Time is of the essence in some of these cases, and it's unacceptable to have three-week delay. The night she went missing, her boyfriend had been arrested for physically assaulting her, and while he was arrested and detained, she went to a woman's shelter in Salmon Arm. The following day, she texted her sister and told her that she was in Kelowna. Then, she vanished. Caitlin is Aboriginal. She was 27 at the time of her disappearance. She's 5'3", 150 pounds, with dark brown hair and brown eyes. Anyone with information is urged to contact Vernon RCMP. Laylee Honeywell disappeared from Merritt. The 44-year-old woman was last seen leaving the Doubletree Inn May 11th around 6pm. 
She was reported missing the next morning, and a missing person alert was made shortly after. A bag was found a few days after her disappearance, and the RCMP is confident that the belongings are Lely's. Other than that, there have been no signs of her, no leads, and no indication that she had intended to leave the area. Laylee is also Aboriginal, 5'3", 150 pounds, with short brown hair and brown eyes. Anyone with information regarding Laylee is urged to contact Merritt RCMP. Now, if you live in BC, you may have seen this TikTok. Good morning. If you are a woman in British Columbia, I need you to listen to this very closely. Or other social media posts urging women to be careful as multiple women have been reported being stalked, followed, or approached by a group of men, a single man, and something involving a white van. There are also two suspicious missing women cases in the area. Trina Hunt went missing on January 18th. The 48-year-old woman went missing from the Port Moody area. Her husband reported her missing that evening and a massive search was undertaken right away. Though the RCMP maintains that there is no evidence to suggest foul play, the family of Trina said that this, this is very unusual and very out of character for her. The only missing items in her home were her jacket and running shoes. Trina didn't bring with her her phone, keys, or wallet. Trina was known to walk along the trails that surrounded her home. She was not known to stray off the marked paths or go on longer walks without telling people where she was going. Trina is 5'4", 120 pounds, with dark brown hair and brown eyes. In the nearby city of Chilliwack, another high-profile missing women's case has been also deemed unrelated and no evidence of foul play by RCMP. Shailene Keeler Bell went missing January 30th. She left her two young sons with a friend and then went out. She was reported missing the following morning and her vehicle was recovered in the Fraser River on February 1st. Today, my daughter Shailene Bell left her apartment at the 9300 block of Edward Street at approximately 8.30 p.m. Saturday, January 30th. She was driving her 2021 Hyundai Tucson. Her vehicle was found Monday, February 1st in the 47,000 block of Ballam Road. Search and rescue were pulled out, but turned up nothing. Shailene left her two small boys at home with a friend. Anyone who knows Shay knows that she was never, ever abandoned her boy. Her phone, keys, and wallet were locked inside the vehicle with no sign of Shailene. In her mother's statement to the press, she said that she has never done this before and that she would never leave her boys and this is highly unusual for Shailene. She's described as 5'2", 95 pounds, with blonde hair and brown eyes. The RCMP put out a statement asking people to stop spreading internet rumors on social media that there may be a predator in the Lower Mainland abducting women. As you can imagine, this statement was poorly received by residents of the area, with people drawing comparisons to the serial killer Robert Picton, who murdered and documented 49 women before his arrest. The BC Union of Indian Chiefs called out the RCMP over how they handled their response to the growing safety concerns on social media, saying, The RCMP failed to address the fear, mistrust, and colonial forces that compel women to, to depend on social media mobilization instead of the police for their safety and ultimately dismissed the deeply rooted fear and trauma that plagues Indigenous women as a result of the ongoing missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls crisis. Keep in mind that people of color underreport crimes to police as they don't trust police, aren't taken seriously, are harassed, or dismissed. They went on to say, by putting out a statement that fails to respect the real concerns and experiences of the women in our community, the RCMP are greatly discouraging people from coming forward in the future to share the stories of violence, victimization, and discrimination. Furthermore, they are contributing to the silence of the issue of sexual violence that has long infiltrated our communities and made women, girls, and people of marginalized genders fearful and hypervigilant. 
The RCMP backtracked from their first statement by releasing a second statement apologizing for referring to the reports on social media as quote-unquote rumors, as well as saying, We have heard from people who might be afraid to go for a jog, work a night shift, or walk down the street on their own. We want to assure those people that your community is safe because there is no information to date that supports a spike or trend in attempted abductions, with RCMP doubling down that there's no reason to be concerned. In my opinion, until the RCMP can guarantee that these women all left on their own accord coincidentally, I think it would be irresponsible to not alert the public to the possibility of a predator. I will remind people to travel with someone else as much as possible, if alone travel areas where there are other people, tell someone else where you're going and when you will be back, carry a personal defense weapon such as pepper spray, keep your phone on you, and if you feel unsafe, get out of that situation as fast as possible. If you are approached or grabbed, make as much noise as humanly possible. If you can get one neighbor, one stranger, one passerby, one vehicle to hear you, they might let you go. Become the most unagreeable, unappealing target. If you see something odd, call the non-emergency line for your police department and make a report, no matter how insignificant it may seem. Though it may seem overkill, it, it could save yours or someone else's life. There was a crime of a woman who'd been inducted by a van and she was screaming and a passing vehicle heard the screams and he'd actually taken a video of the vehicle and where it was. But ultimately, he didn't go to police with that information and that woman was murdered. You just never know what might be insignificant or not. I hope all of these women come home safe. I will do an update if there are any changes in these cases. If you're in the area of any of these women, please check your dash cams or doorbell cams on the dates of their disappearance to see if maybe you can find something. If you have a story or want to hear more from women in the area, follow the hashtag UnsafeBC. There are thousands of women coming forward, many of whom have police file numbers to confirm that they reported their encounters with the RCMP. I'm also going to link a nonprofit down below if you would like to donate to them to help them protect women. It would be very greatly appreciated. And I will be donating the proceeds from the AdSense in this video as well. Well, that'll be it for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out until the end. As always, please give this video a thumbs up if you like the content and subscribe for more if you haven't already. If you've done all that and you want to support me and the channel, we have channel membership to get early access and ad-free versions, members-only content, and more, and other goodies in the description box and links to all my socials. But until then, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.